Hello and welcome to EV Review Ireland. Today we are in sunny Spain, just outside Marbella, to look at the Renault Megane E-Tech. Electric, and it's only going to come in electric. Let's get straight into it. Beautiful design. We would have seen this last year at the Munich Motor Show. And it's even nicer in the flesh. Some people are calling it a crossover SUV. What Renault themselves and the designer, I believe, is calling it is a family hatchback. And it has those proportions. It is 1.5 meters tall. It is 4.1 meters long with a wheel space of 2.7. And it's nearly 1.8 meters wide. A lovely form factor. And I think a really nice design. Let's start at the front and then work our way around. You've got this uh, new Renault designed badge logo. I really like it, but it is prominent on the front. You've got that camera in underneath, some chrome elements, and then you've got beautiful LED pure vision headlights with these gorgeous um, daylight running lights. And what I really like about these is an element of them stays on while that indicator is swooping as well. Sometimes the full day daylight running light turns off in some other cars, but on this one, it dims slightly, but the indicator and the daylight running light stays on. Uh, there is no front in the Renault Megane E-Tech. Um, you can get it in about 30 different color combinations, the main body color, and then you can have an accent color if you want. And on this model that I have here today, it's got that gold accent on it with this double arrow headed feature at the front um, and some active air in underneath your parking sensors. Uh, and you have your air cushions either side as well to give it that aerodynamic 0.25 drag coefficient. Really like the front of it, like the design overall, some lovely scallops coming out of it. Um, this color I really like as well because it is, I like that metallic -y kind of gray. But overall, nice. Let me know in the comments whether you like the gold accent or not, if it's too bling for you. And then at the very bottom, the front diffuser is a gloss black on this version. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. We're nearing that 6,000 subscribers mark, so it's constantly building, which uh, we're getting close to a year and three quarters in existence. Moving down along the side, you have a glass black wheel arch. Uh, these are 20 inch rims, but you can get them 18s and 19s. After driving it for the last two and a half hours, very comfortable on the 20s, so I can only imagine the 18s and the 19s will be even better. You have your glass black side mirrors and that retractable with the built-in indicator. Some chrome elements, which kind of gives you a false roof line. You have your glass black roof. No sunroof on this version, and I haven't seen a sunroof spectrum, so I'm wondering if that's the case. The pop-out flush door handles, and there is a way of manually opening them if you need to. Um, you have kind of a matte plastic in underneath, and then a glass black at the very bottom. Nice roof line, nice side profile, and like in a couple of other Renaults and a couple of other vehicles, this rear handle is hidden into that C-pillar section and the hole, rather than, I know on the Zoe was a bit finicky, whereas that is a hole handle there, really good. Let's turn around and have a look at the back, but overall, front design and side design, I really like it. It's better looking than the ID3, and that's what we're going up against here, it's main German arrival, and this is going to do very well against the ID3 if, if they can get enough of them. Let's have a look around the back. Moving down along the side, but up at the top we have the charging flap. So on the right hand side near the front, and that's AC and DC, only on one side. Charging for the Renault Megane E-Tech is on the front right hand side. And it is CCS. And you can get 7.4 on the AC and an optional 22. And on the DC it can range from 80 kilowatts I think it's 80 up to about 130 odd, um, depending on the electric motor. It comes in two different variants with two different battery sizes as well. Access in the boot is this square button here and it pops it open. It is an electronic. It has 440 litres of great size, deep, big overhang, but overall um, very capable of holding a lot of stuff. There is my suitcase and you can see what it's like with inside and you've got a light you've got a couple of hooks don't see 12 volt which would be nice to see and you've a couple of tie-off points as well um, and the aesthetics and the aerodynamics you have a large spoiler at the back very similar to an id3 you have a window wiper which is always great to see on it as well and so you've got that high level brake light in there you've got these beautiful um, they're like threads for their brake lights you have that side to side light bar on it as well 
and with the Megane you have the uh, gold E which signifies the electrification of it. When it breaks there's lovely square really visible LEDs in the back of this as well. Body coloured, body coloured, gloss black and then that accent colour, that double ended arrow head um, or, or arrow tail apologies. And you've got your cameras, there is a camera uh, for the rear view mirror. I'm trying to figure out where it's located. It's not on the shark fin aerial, so I presume it's up in underneath there somewhere. Um, I don't know where it's located actually. Maybe this one at the back here, but it seems to be very high up. Um, nice glass black diffuser on it as well. Really distinctive on the road. I really like it. Let's have a look on the inside. The camera unit for the rear diffuser or for the rear view mirror is in underneath uh, and it's caught in the area of the wiper as well so it doesn't get um, smudged up with muck and um, so figured it out. What's it like inside the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric? Beautiful styling, quality of feel, builds, the whole thing. Starting at the door you've got this nice wood finish that goes along the top of the dash and over to the other door. You've got some chrome sorry brushed kind of metal effect with ambient lighting with the ambient lighting they've got a thing you can pick whichever, whichever color you like but they have a thing called living light and it changes from cooler tones to warmer tones throughout the day if you're in the car a lot uh, glass black door handle we have uh, the bleeps and the bloops decent sized door bin and you've got all your windows and mirror adjustments on the door as well as locking it down on this model it is auto down for all four windows Inside the door handle you've kind of got that diamond effect and that theme and that design is, is throughout. 12 inch landscape, 12 inch portrait. Um, above my knee you've got the handbrake and you've got auto hold. You've got the um, traction control and the headlight adjuster. You've got your vents. The display is lovely. Uh, there's a couple of different options. With the infotainment system it is based on Android Auto. So you're going to get a lot of Google Assistant, you're going to get Google Maps, and you're going to be able to get into the Google Play Store. Um, so that's really good. On the actual dash, you've got the two dials, you've got the option of changing it to your map view, and then you've got an option of a very uncluttered uh, version as well. So it's really nice. And you have the option then of changing what specific details you're looking for within that. Lots going on behind the wheel, but in a good way. You've got your regen paddles. There isn't one pedal, but the third level is pretty good. Left hand side is all lights. Right hand side is your wipers. Above that is a stock for your reverse neutral drive. And below that then, like a lot of Renaults, you have your audio stock as well. Steering wheel is really nice, three spoke. On the right hand side is all your driver assist, so your lane keep, your adaptive cruise, etc. And then on the right hand side you've got your phone, your view, your menu, your voice assistant and a shortcut button, whatever you want that to be. Multi-sense then, depending on the, how you want to drive, there's five levels of drive but we'll talk about that when we're out in it. Nice leather clad steering wheel, the steering ratio is what they're saying is 12 to 1 and there's not many other brands that have that really dynamic feeling driving. Most manufacturers use a 14 to 16 to 1 ratio of a turn, but really enjoyed it on the way up here. Some lovely mountainous roads and it put it to its pace. Uh, you have reach and rake on the actual steering wheel as well. Over my right knee is the power button. Uh, moving over then to the 12 inch portrait screen based on Android Auto. Um, and so you have that integration, but it does work with Apple CarPlay as well. Lots of information in that with regards to how you want your car. You've got 360 camera, automatic uh, parking. You've got uh, massage seats in this version. You've got air quality, etc., etc. What I like about it is underneath it, then you have some physical buttons, uh, toggle switches for dual zone climate control. You can sync it. You can uh, change the temperature by not going into the screen and a lot of people like that and I'm a fan of that as well. Hazard lights and centre locking. Underneath that then you've got again that diamond effect interior same as the bottom of the door handles and you've got your wireless charging pad as I said you have wireless um, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay already as well as Android built into it. Lots of space down here in the central console. You've got a cup holder that you can change the size of. You've got a standard cup holder. You've got another shelf You've got a little place where you're putting your key here and then you've got a sliding uh, arm rest width, if I can open it, a fairly decent sized bin in there as well. The 
glove box is on the this is a left hand drive as you can see it's fairly decent i'd say when it comes over here as always it'll be a slightly smaller one because the fuse box is in underneath the steering wheel seats are really nice um quality no sunroof which i'm surprised at but i'm not sure if i haven't seen an option on it yet today is really a first impressions a couple of hours driving it and then when we get it back to ireland right hand drive give it a full review but size wise space wise height wise i'm six foot two 187 centimeters lovely driving position now there is a letterbox uh, of a window that you can use but what Renault have done is they've put that uh, camera in there as well but you can switch it off if you want just a regular mirror it's been absolutely blinding bright today and probably is on the screen as we're chatting and the camera has been perfect really good haven't driven at night time and i will do that once we get it back to ireland but the fit the finish the quality the whole package is very very good very impressed for our first impressions i've set the seat for me as i said i'm 187 centimeters six foot two let's have a seat in the back to see what we're at and then we'll take it out for a drive i'll leave the door open just because it's so dark outside it's dark inside and bright outside What's the seat like versus where I, my seating position is? You can see there, there's about 10, 15 millimeters of space and my feet fitting underneath the seat in front. Nice seats, not too restrictive for viewers out of the back. You've got a um, magazine holder in the back of both seats. You've got a vents in the middle of the center console and you've got two USB type C's. Seats are good, probably big enough for two adults. Three isofix, one in the front and two in the rear, which is great. Uh, no armrest, which is a, a bit of an unusual one. Three full headrests, but seating position is good. Yeah, I'd like a small bit more um, thigh support, but overall it's pretty good. The doors themselves, not bad. Pocket, you'd fit a bottle into it. Courtesy light here. Yeah, let's take it out for a drive. What's it like driving the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric? Amazing. There's a number of other EVs out there that are going to be worried about this because they've done an amazing job. It's built on that CMF platform and that is uh, the same platform that the Nissan Aria. So it's a joint partnership with Nissan and other cars are going to be built on this. This is front wheel drive and at the press conference they were asked about whether we're going to get a all wheel drive and they said maybe not in the Megane, maybe in the Megane, we don't know, but definitely other models will have that all-wheel drive. Alpine are looking at doing all-electric in a couple of years for sport. Renault obviously have their RS sports division as well, so there's lots of opportunities with this platform, but Driving-wise, it's amazing. That steering ratio, really good. I talked about it when I was sitting inside just doing the static rundown of the cabin and that 12 to 1 ratio versus that 14 or 16 to 1 that you typically get. And we were sitting in the press conference and we were a bit worried that it was going to be too twitchy. Um, so it's a fast turn, it's a fast rack. Um, it's not a rack, it's all electric now, I'm sure. But overall, really good. The driver assists are amazing. The speed side recognition is probably the best I've seen in any EV that I've driven. And what I mean by that is it picks up the speed limit as the, on the road that you're on, 90 odd, 95, 96% of the time. It will also pick up the speed limit of a slip road and it'll show you that it's a slip road by putting in an arrow there. So really good to see it and that it's understanding it. It also picks up that it, uh, it, it pops it up on the dash whether you should or shouldn't uh, overtake or you can or can't overtake if it's a non-overtaking zone. So the driver assist, there's a couple of things in it with adaptive cruise control. It also understands uh, if you're coming up to a bend or a roundabout, it slows you down automatically. So even if you set it for 100 kilometers an hour and there's no car in front of you, it understands it can't go through a roundabout at 100 kilometers an hour. So that's good to see. It has the, op like other EVs, it also has the um, not letting people out of doors when it senses a car coming up behind or a cyclist or a motorcyclist so it has that uh, has those sensors around it comes in two different size batteries a 40 kilowatt usable and a 60 kilowatt usable so that's going to be handy uh, it also comes with two electric motors and depending on the region that you're watching this in and what is being ordered into your country will dictate how that's going what i've seen in a couple of 
places is uh, the lower the 40 kilowatt only coming in the lower motor and then the larger 60 kilowatt hour battery coming with both electric motors now with those electric motors it's a 96 kilowatt motor and that will give you a, a 130 brake horsepower that's 131 ps or 250 newton meters of torque and then the larger electric motor is 160 kilowatt, giving you 220 brake horsepower or 300 newton meters of torque. That's what I'm driving today. It's that one and it is very capable uh, for an uh, electric family hatchback. Uh, and we talked about that form factor and what, it, what, it, what the designer thinks it should be called as. And I agree with him, I think it is a hatchback. Calling these things crossover SUVs or small SUVs or whatever you want to call it, I think it's a family hatch. It is a bit higher, but it's still only 1.5 meters tall, so uh, very well within the realms of parking it easy, of fitting it into spaces that other hatchbacks will be able to come into. Zero to 100, depending on the electric motor, you can get that done in 10 seconds or 7.4 seconds if it is the uh, more powerful electric motor that you have. WLTP, and they're proud of this, the, and what they're proud of, I'll come to in a second, the EV60 has a WLTP of 450. EV database is giving that with their uh, calculations about 360. I got into this one today, 100 kilometers, 100% battery, and it had about 370. Now we're in Marbella, it is 22 degrees outside, so temperatures are fairly ideal for it. So yeah, you're mid to high 300s for the larger battery, which I think is the perfect size battery for me. I think it's big enough for anybody, unless you're doing a lot of mileage in any one day. Otherwise, you're going to be charging it overnight if you can charge it. With the smaller EV40 battery, WLTP on that is 300. And again, EV database is saying you're realistically looking at 260 uh, of a real world range. Uh, I mentioned the charging outside. It comes with 7.4 kilowatt AC as standard and that will do it in about nine hours 45 minutes on a regular home wall box and you can also spec the uh, 22 kilowatt ac charger um which it was on the zoe um very handy for out and about public charging at supermarkets at destination chargers those faster ac three phase 11 kilowatts and 22 kilowatts really really good and if you can find one of those you will be able to go from 10 to 80 percent in three hours and 50 minutes so dinner and a movie your car is going to be 70% better off for it on your ac charger excellent use of resources and that cmf platform that 22 kilowatt charge ac is going to be available across this future nissan brands and also that nissan area which we're very excited about on dc uh, the ev40 gets 85 kilowatt fast charging and that will do you 10 to 80 percent in 29 minutes and then the ev60 gets 130 kilowatt dc and that will fill you up depending on where you go if you go to a 50 kilowatt which is the norm for a lot of places around publicly you're going to get 10 to 80 percent in 66 minutes and then you're going to be going either if you get 100 kilowatt, you get that in 35 minutes. And if you do get anything above 130 kilowatts, you'll get that done in 29 minutes. Consumption for this trip, I'm not hopefully you can pick it up on it, but uh, it is 13.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Um, we're doing mainly mountain roads, um, some up, some down. On the way up, it was floating around the 15, 16 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So efficiency wise, looks very, very good. The quietness and the sound in the cabin is so good. They've put foam underneath the battery pack and above the battery pack, but the acoustics uh, amazing. And the, this Harman Kardon with the upgraded sound system is excellent as well. I'm obviously a huge fan, as you can tell. I've only been driving it a couple of hours. I'm really looking forward to having it for longer once we get it to Ireland. I've seen on EV database that it is towing rated up to 900 kgs. That wasn't confirmed with us yet. Uh, it hasn't been Euro end capped for anybody looking to leave that into the comments. Prices in Ireland we haven't got, but we do have prices in France. And what I'll do between recording this and sending it out and editing it, I look at the Zoe price in France and compare it to the um, Zoe price in Ireland and try and work out a rough guesstimation. Listen, they're going up against the Volkswagen ID3. It is, they're going to have to price it in around that kind of price range. Driving features that I like is the car in front and it will let you know how many seconds behind you are. And rather than distance, because it'll depend on your speed, 
will dictate how far that seconds behind is and it'll give you a color coding so if you get too close to them it'll turn that aura around you to an amber and then when you get very close sorry as you get closer to them it goes amber and then it goes uh, red very well set up suspension wise there and again you have that um low center of gravity like all electric vehicles the battery pack in the floor but they've really worked on that driving dynamic and they want this car to be fun to drive to be engaging to drive so and i think they've achieved it in my opinion for those of you who watched the channel uh, since i've set this up a year and a half ago you know i've mentioned a couple of times that i was in the fire service for 14 years and um in the press briefing they were talking about how since renault zoe they've worked with the parisian fire service department uh, brigade whatever you want to call it and they um have worked out a system where the fire service can come up to a vehicle involved in a road traffic collision or a road traffic accident and they can scan the barcodes on the windows or there's certain areas that they can get the information as to what the model is, what they need to do to shut down the battery, etc. And with this one, they just need, to, if there's an issue or a fire in the battery, they can just quickly whip out the rear bench and there's an inlet valve for uh, a fire hose to be put directly onto it and it fills up that battery compartment fully. With the battery compartment, they also are talking about um, the energy recuperation and heating elements because this is not air cooled like zoe this is liquid cooled and taking heat from areas that it has versus putting the heat into area that it needs it to be so great to see that they're thinking about the dynamics of it um day to day but also thinking about the emergency services if it is involved in a road traffic collision that is my first impressions of the Renault Megane E-Tech Electric. It's a mouthful. Delighted to be in here in Spain. Delighted to be getting to more of these launches um, as a fully electric YouTube channel. Hopefully you've enjoyed the review. Let me know in the comments if you're thinking about the Megane E-Tech, if this review has piqued your interest. Uh, leave a comment, share, like, all the good stuff that shows you, YouTube that you're interested in this type of content. Remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.